Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unmanned. Flightwave Aerospace introduces new Jupiter Tricopter. Unmanned vehicles deliver a unique performance in DARPA tests. And UAS operations restricted at more federal facilities. Welcome to Aero News Network's Airborne Unmanned, a weekly news program covering all things unmanned. In partnership with AUVSI, the Association for Unmanned Vehicle Systems International. I'm Sophie Herlock. Flightwave Aerospace launched its new Jupiter Tricopter UAS, a drone the company says is reminiscent of a tough-as-nails pickup truck designed for missions where durability, stamina, and control are required. The Jupiter UAS has the same engineering that provided precision control for Flightwave's Edge 130 UAS, this time in a wingless craft making it suitable for indoor missions, where precision in tight spaces is crucial. The drone is a result of Flightwave's quest to give customers the ability to lift a lot of weight and stay in the air for long periods of time. The Jupiter UAS has four crucial components to address the needs of its customers. A large battery, optimized power management, precise tilt pods, as well as being extremely economical. Now it's time for our Unmanned Minute, where we'll be taking a quick look at news making rounds of the unmanned vehicle communities. The U.S. Department of Interior has grounded most of its drones over concerns the Chinese-made aircraft and components may present a security risk. The DOI operates a fleet of 810 drones, which are used for missions ranging from monitoring floods and fires, dam inspections, and tracking endangered species. Of those aircraft, about 15% are manufactured entirely by Chinese drone giant DJI, and every drone contains components made in China. For fixed-wing UAVs operating from traditional runways, the landing maneuver is usually the most challenging and critical stage of any flight. Primaco has been testing the latest version of UAV Navigation's flight control system on its 330-pound fixed-wing UAV. During the test, Primaco noted a number of improvements, including more efficient and advanced controls, and in particular a completely automatic takeoff and landing capability without using RTK or DGPS systems. Volocopter presented the demonstrator of its Volo drone, marking the company's expansion into the logistics, agriculture, infrastructure, and public services industry. The Volo drone is an unmanned, fully electric, heavy lift utility drone, capable of carrying a payload of up to 200 kilograms. With a standard payload attachment, Volo drone can serve a great variety of transportation purposes. Drone Delivery Canada entered into a commercial agreement with Edmonton Regional Airport's authority operating Edmonton International Airport and Villeneuve Airport for the purpose of establishing the world's first airport drone delivery hub. DDC and ERAA will build out flight routes from EIA using DDC's drone spot takeoff and landing zones, utilizing DDC's drone flight infrastructure. Now back to the rest of the news. Northrop Grumman demonstrated progress towards successful heterogeneous unmanned vehicle swarming with the test of rapid integration swarm ecosystem at DARPA's second field experiment. The experiment leveraged the command, control, and collaboration capabilities of RISE in a mock city environment at Fort Benning, Georgia, with dozens of UXVs and human team members. The test was part of Northrop Grumman's work as a swarm systems integrator in the agency's offensive swarm-enabled tactics program, which seeks to provide dismounted soldiers with upwards of 250 small UXVs. At the most recent field experiment, Northrop Grumman demonstrated its versatility and showcase its open architecture by integrating various capabilities from associate contractors into RISE. RISE also demonstrated self-healing task allocation in the event of loss of communications via capabilities provided by Heron Systems. The FAA announced UAS airspace restrictions over additional national security sensitive locations, which go into effect on Thursday. In cooperation with its federal partners, the FAA will restrict UAS operations in the airspace over 60 additional Department of Defense and Department of Justice facilities to address concerns about malicious drone activity. The FAA published a new NOTAM 
FDC 9-1278, which alerts UAS operators and others in the aviation community to this change and points to FDC 9-7752. UAS operators are strongly advised to review these NOTAMs, as well as important supporting information provided by the FAA's UAS Data Delivery System website. The restrictions will also be included in the FAA's Before You Fly mobile app. UAS operators who violate these flight restrictions may be subject to enforcement action, including potential civil penalties and criminal charges. The FAA considers requests by eligible federal security agencies for UAS-specific flight restrictions using its authority under 14 CFR Section 99.7. The agency will announce any future changes, including additional locations as appropriate. And that's all for us today. Don't forget to click subscribe and to check us out on Twitter and on Facebook. For more information on the innovative world of all things unmanned, head over to auvsi.org and airborne-unmanned.net. Thanks for watching and I'll see you tomorrow.